Now let's move on to inheritance in Java programming. Inheritance can be defined as the process where one class acquires the properties, methods and fields, of another. The class which inherits the properties of other is known as a subclass, or a derived class or child class, and the class whose properties are inherited is known as a superclass, or base class or parent class. Below given is the syntax of the extends keyword. Here you can see we have our superclass. And under that, we have our subclass, which extends the superclass. Here we have a sample program. Again, feel free to copy out any code you see within these lectures and practice it for yourselves. Now let's move over to the super keyword. The super keyword is similar to this keyword, and the following are the scenarios where the super keyword is used. It is used to differentiate the members of a superclass from the members of a subclass, if they have the same names. We also have the ability to differentiate the members, if a class is inheriting the properties of another class, and if the members of the superclass have the names the same as the subclass. To differentiate these variables, we use the super keyword, as shown below. Here's an example. As you can see in the code, we have super throughout the entirety of it. And we have our super classes and our subclasses. Let's look at the is a relationship. Is-a is a way of saying this object is a type of that object. Let's take a look at how the extends keyword is used to achieve inheritance. Here we have in this code, animal, mammal, which extends animal, reptile, which extends animal, and dog, which also extends on mammal. Now, based on the above example, in object-oriented terms, the following are true. Animal is a superclass of the mammal class. Animal is a superclass of the reptile class. Mammal and reptile are subclasses of the animal class. And dog is the subclass of both mammal and animal classes. Now, if we consider the is a relationship, we can say mammal is a animal, reptile is a animal, dog is a mammal, hence dog is a animal as well. We can assure that mammal is actually an animal with the use of the instance operator. Here is an example of some code. Again, feel free to write this out. We also have the instance of keyword. Let's use the instance of operator to check and determine whether mammal is actually an animal and dog is actually an animal. There is also the has a. Let's take a look at has a relationships. These relationships are mainly based on the usage. This determines whether a certain class has a certain thing. Let's look into an example. This example shows that class van has a speed. By having a separate class for speed, we do not have to put the entire code that belongs to speed inside the van class, which makes it possible to reuse the speed class in multiple applications. In the object oriented feature, the users do not need to bother about which object is doing the real work. To achieve this, the van class hides the implementation details from the users of the van class. So basically, what happens is the users would ask the van class to do a certain action, and the van class will either do the work by itself or ask another class to perform that action. 
let's look at types of inheritance. Here you can see that we have different levels of types of inheritance. Each extends a class. With the first one, we have public class A and public class B extends A. And as you can see, this is also carried out through the other types of inheritance that we have. Lastly, we have multiple inheritance. This means that a class cannot extend more than one class. Therefore, the following is illegal. However, a class can implement one or more interfaces. This has made Java get rid of the impossibility of multiple inheritance. That's it for this lecture. I'll see you guys in the next one.